Hey, mechanic, I got a job here for you. Hey, you! Talking to me? Well, I'm not talking to myself. Look at that motor, will you? It's got a bad miss in it. It's almost 9 o'clock, Josh. Hey, snap it up, will you, bud? We've got a date on Heron Point. Bad news. I'll have to check your carburetor and ignition system. I'll try to have it for you before noon tomorrow. Tomorrow? What are you trying to give us? Well, that means no ghost hunt, no party tonight. I could run you out to the point in my car. Would you? Well, you've got a deal. Okay, store your luggage. I'll be right back. You don't believe in uh, straining yourself, do you? Doc says it ain't good for a man my age to work up a sweat in the night air. How much do I owe you for the tire I had to change myself? Two bits. What for? For the loan of the overalls. Oh. Ain't she pretty? Oh, I don't know. It's all a matter of taste, don't you think? Somebody certainly threw away a lot of dough on this causeway. Yes, a real estate boom that never boomed. Regular island out here, and only one house. The Richmond house. That's where we're going. How long have you two been married? We're not married. Just going away for the weekend. She's my sister. What's this about a ghost on Heron Point? It's a legend about an old pirate ship washed ashore there. Once a year, a ghost is supposed to appear in the wreckage. Tonight's the night the ghost shows up? Cousin Bo is making a party out of it. <laughs> Cousin Bo can make a party out of anything. <laughs> Sounds like fun. I'd like to go along. Look, bud, we're not getting the party. It's Miss Carol, Mr. Carol. Well, it looks like we're giving quite a party tonight. Well, let's be good sports about it, Bo. Hello, Ann. And Josh, this is a surprise. Why, he says that is the way he didn't expect it. Hmm. Well, Charlie and I thought perhaps on a night like this... Oh, it's a perfect night for a ghost, Cousin Bo. Wouldn't be any fun without a storm. Well, let's go inside, darling, before we freeze. Thank you very much for the lift. That's all right. Well, Josh, you have introduced us. Oh, he's a mechanic. Our car broke down. Say, how much do I owe you? No charge. Have a good time with the ghost. Thanks. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm sure you'll want to go upstairs and freshen up, dear. I would like to comb the wind out of my hair. Who else is here, Cousin Chatty? Oh, Homer Norton, Cynthia Harrison. They're playing a little game of gin right now. And the, uh, uh, the Scots are here. David and Sylvia? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, they arrived just a little while ago. I, I believe they're upstairs, aren't they, Chatty? Mm-hmm. What do you want, David? Why did you follow me here? Follow you? I was invited. Oh, Cousin Bo's grim sense of humor. Get out, please. This happens to be my room. And I happen to be your husband, remember? Ex-husband? Or have you forgotten that? I'm ignoring it. Oh, ignoring a decree of the court, huh? Exactly. Well, whether you ignore it or not, there's no room in my life for you, David Scott. And there's no room in your life for any man. It's me, Sylvia, or no one. Understand? Is that a threat? Take it any way you like. Oh, hello, Scott. So that's why you want to get rid of me. Your boyfriend's here. Now, let's get this straight right now, Scott. That's over with. Finished. You're... It is, David. Can't we all just forget it? Anne's got the right idea. After all, this is a party. Let's get on with it. Forget our troubles. We all have them, don't we?
this battle of a century, Homer. You're doing me a favor. Cynthia's blitzing me right and left. <laughs> well, you'll have a chance for revenge in just a minute. May I have your attention, please? I feel a speech coming on. I'll make it brief. In the first place, let me say, Charlie and I are delighted to have you all with us for the weekend. There's nothing we like more than a party, and that's exactly what we're going to have. However, those invitations you received, we didn't send them. And we don't know who did. How embarrassing. Looks like there's a practical joker in our midst. If this was your idea, why did you include me? That's right. Why would I include you? Look, gentlemen, Bo and Chatty didn't invite us here, so let's not make the situation any worse. Well, it looks like no one here sent them out. So, let's consider it a good idea anyway and go on with the party. And now for your local news, Atlanta. Police tonight announced that Dr. Paul Dexter is now being sought in connection with the $100,000 worth of radium reported missing from the Mercy Hospital last Thursday. Dr. Dexter is described as 40 years, medium height, slim build, and dark complexion. He was last seen Dexter, didn't you know a Dr. Paul Dexter while you were at the Mercy Hospital? Oh, I knew him quite casually, the way a patient knows any member of the hospital staff. I'm trying to make a romance out of that too, David. Ah, Woodrow, just what we need. A spot of bourbon to warm us up before the ghost hunt. Thanks, Woodrow. Ah! Look, there's a man out there. There's no one out there. Just my sister's idea of a gag. Well, we all fell for it, so let's give her credit. It wasn't a gag, Cousin Bo. I did see a man out there. Sort of a white shirt. Oh, probably just an old newspaper blowing past. It couldn't have been anything else, Ann. No one comes to Heron Point but our guests. Not even prowlers. Mr. Richmond? Yes? I think maybe that ain't no ghost. I hope. Come in. Thank you. Well, that's the man from the garage. I'm uh, sorry to bother you, but uh, my car broke down. A mechanic isn't able to repair his own car, Mr. Blair. Well, wouldn't you like to use our phone? Well, I, uh, I don't think it'd do much good. There's nobody at the garage after 10. But we can't let the poor man walk all the way across the causeway on a night like this. No, of course not, but we can put you up for the night. And in the meantime, you can join us in a ghost hunt. Why don't you let him play the ghost? He did a pretty good job of scaring Ann a minute ago. Mr. Blair is not the man that I saw. The other man was wearing a white shirt. Mr. Blair, were you at the other door a moment ago? No, I, uh, I don't know what you mean. I came around this side of the house just now. Oh, lay off that spook stuff, Ann. <clears throat> I believe you already know Mr. Carroll and his sister, Ann. This is my wife, Mrs. Richmond. How do you do? Mr. Norton. How do you do? Mr. and Mrs. David Scott. How do you do? And Miss Cynthia Harrison. How do you do? Mr. Richmond thought maybe you might need this on a kind of rain, Mr. Flair. Well, thanks, Mr. Where those screams come from, Woodrow? Well, come on. Not me. Who is it? Who's there? It's me, Sylvia. Are you all right? Something scared me. Rad, I guess. I'm sorry. 
Is it Sylvia? She's okay, Mr. Scott. I tripped and lost my shoe. Find it for me, will you, David? They're coming up. It's Sylvia. You scared the life out of us, Sylvia. What in the world happened? What, my dear, ever sent you to the cellar? I went there to find something to put over me, to, to scare everybody at the ghost hunt, and a big mouse or a rat frightened me. A rat? Woodrow, get the cat and put it down in the cellar. Who, me? Oh, yes. Here you are, Sylvia. Thanks. Why, look, it's spotted. It, it looks like... It's blood. Still damp. Did you cut yourself, Sylvia? Uh-uh. No, I did. Before or after Sylvia screamed. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Josh. I said a rat skin. Well? Well, let's get on with the ghost hunt. You've just got ten minutes to get our coats. We Come can't on, keep the ghost waiting. <laughs> and no more screams, Sylvia. Well, no. that'll depend on the rats and the mice. I think I'm going out in that cellar with you. You got another thing coming. This is the place. I'm going to ask you all to take positions facing me and maintain absolute silence. What if Sylvia sees another rat? If she screams again out here, I'll drop in my tracks. I'll hang on to Sylvia. No talking, please. I'll only sketch briefly the old legend that has brought us here tonight to see the ghost of Heron Point. About a hundred years ago, a pirate ship was washed ashore here in a heavy storm. The pirates used this island for several years, and it's believed they discovered a sort of secret cave in which they hid their stolen treasures. The cave has never been located, so it might be merely a legend. On the night the ship was wrecked, the beacon in this old lighthouse was blown out by the storm, and the entire crew drowned. Once a year, on the anniversary of that event, the ghost of the ship's captain appears amid the wreckage, and we're here tonight to see him. I now direct your attention to the wreckage of a ship that died a hundred years ago. Let's have some light. Where's Cousin Bo? I got a flashlight here. Stretch around for a few seconds. She'll be all right. <gasps> My hand! Look! A dagger. Looks like... Don't one touch of... it. You did it. You did it! You killed my sister, David Scott! You said you would, and you did! You now, did! You did! Cynthia, please, wait! Cynthia, please! You better take her in the house, you and Chatty. <laughs> Phone the police and tell them to block the causeway so no one can get off the island. <laughs> Give me a hand. Don't touch her. That's for the police. He's right, Josh. Well, it's gonna rain any second. We can't just leave her out here. I'm afraid we'll have to, Mr. Carroll. Maybe this will help. Yeah. Thanks. Ah. Mr. Richmond, you better go back to the house in case the women should need somebody. The rest of us will start combing the island. Looking for whom? The killer didn't have to be one of us, Mr. Carroll. He did it. David did it. He said once that any husband had a right to kill his wife if there was somebody else. And he meant it. He knew about Josh and Sylvia. He didn't really mean what he said. It was just talk. Try not to think about it, dear. You must get some rest. Oh, your nerves are all unstrung. Try and get hold of yourself. I'm going to see that you have a couple of my sleeping tablets. And, dear, hadn't you better call the police? Yes, right away. I want to put in a call. Operator? 
Operator, can you hear me? I'm trying to get the police. I had the operator on the line just a few seconds ago. Then the line went dead. Here, let me listen. Hello, hello. Yes, dead, all right. Usually on a stormy night like this, we have trouble with the phone or the lights, and sometimes both. What are we going to do? Send somebody to town. Woodrow. Yes, you speaking to me, sir? Yes, come here. Take the station wagon and go to town. You mean I got to go all alone? Yes. Here, you'll need these. And don't stop till you get the police. Uh, no, sir. I won't stop. I won't stop, Mr. Richmond. Take the station wagon to town and get the police on account of the phone wouldn't phone. Cause if you don't want me to go now. Go ahead, Woodrow. Excuse me, I guess I'll be on my way. just won't run. What do you mean, won't run? Well, I stepped on the start, and all it said was... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's all. Well, here, Woodrow, you can take my car. But suppose yours go... Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? And if it won't run, you can use mine. You're so kind, sir. Go ahead, Woodrow. Yes. Bo, have you any idea what happened to Sylvia? Well, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? I think what Mr. Norton means is this. Could there be any connection between what happened to Mrs. Scott and your ghost? Well, there is no ghost. That was all intended in the line of fun for the party tonight. But we did see something. Well, what you all saw was only a little invention of mine. A figure and some draw wires operated from the old lighthouse. Just an optical illusion, I assure you. Sylvia's murder was no optical illusion. If you want my opinion, the guilty party's right in this house. Homer, do you realize what you're saying? He might be right. We're all suspects. And until the police get here, nobody should leave the house. Does that include Scott, too? I've had just about all I want from you. Who do you think you're fooling? What do you mean, fooling? Everybody knows I've been trying to patch it up with Sylvia. Has it occurred to any of you that this playboy might have been pretty mad at Sylvia for brushing him off? That he might have been mad enough to make sure that no one else got her? Brush me off? Why, only last Let's week I... save all that stuff for the police. Yes, by all means, let's. Our nerves are all unstrung. I think we should retire and try to get a little rest because there won't be much rest after the police get here. Come along, Josh. I think we'll have to fix you up in here, Mr. Blair. I'll see that you get some blankets. Well, thanks. Woodrow. Haven't you left yet? No, ma'am, Miss Kemp. I've tried my best. But them cars are still going. They're just busted for good. Can't you do something about it, Mr. Blair? You're a mechanic. I can't do much out that night. I will need daylight. Oh, that means I don't have to go? I guess that's right, Woodrow. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Are uh, these for me? Cousin Chatty gave them to me. Where are you bunking? The uh, presidential suite. May I make up your bed for you, Mr. President? Why, certainly. Uh, how's Miss Cynthia? Cousin Chatty gave her some sleeping pills. She sure went to pieces out there. Can you blame her? She was awfully fond of Sylvia, in spite of the fact that Sylvia never really returned the affection. I, uh... I can't say I mind this. Not a bit. Mr. Blair, doesn't it strike you as very strange that so many cars should break down tonight? Yeah, I'll have a busy day tomorrow. First Josh's car on the way here, then three cars all at once out in the shed. Why, even your own car. 
That's one break I'm not sorry for. Good night, Mr. Blair. Good night, Miss Carroll. Oh, Miss Carroll, one more thing. Yes? If I uh, should need anything further, should I uh, just uh, ring? Why, of course, Mr. Blair. At your slightest wish, just ring the bell. And Woodrow will be right in. What's this all about? It's all right, I got him. You've got me. What are you talking about? I've got you. I caught you sneaking through that door, didn't I? You mean I caught you already in here? He slipped in that door a minute before I got here. I followed him. If he says anything different, he's a liar. Is that right, Josh? Were you here first? Well, I don't have to answer that, Bo. You'll have to answer to the police, Mr. Carroll. All right, I did come in here. I was looking for something. Just for Sylvia's room, Josh. Well, it was only a letter that I wrote to Sylvia. Then you didn't break off with her. I did. That's what the letter was about. Oh, so you threatened her. You told her it was all over or else. It was just a letter that I didn't want to fall in the hands of the police. You know how they are, always trying to make something out of nothing. Did you find it, Josh? No, I didn't. And I'm not sure she still had it anyhow. What's going on in here? Nothing to worry about, Chatty. Homer and Josh just captured each other. Sylvia. Thanks. Why, well, look, it spotted it. It looks like... It's blood. Still damp. Cynthia. Cynthia.
fainted. It's the idea of these pillars under this blanket. Doubling for me. In case of another dagger in the dark. Is she all right? Just fainted. Well, what in the world was the poor child doing out on a night like this? You've got me there. But you certainly discovered something. Sylvia Scott, she's gone. What are you talking about? Her body disappeared. Only the slicker left. No brandy in here. Woodrow. Yes. Get some more brandy. Yes. Oh, she's coming too. You'll be all right, dear. We'll have some brandy for you in a minute. Who was it that got behind me out there? Me. I'm sorry. You followed me? Why? To find out why you were prowling around out there. I still don't know. Do you mind telling us about it? Well, in the middle of the night, I woke up. All of a sudden, something dawned on me. Terribly important. So I... I decided to check it, that's all. Did it check? Mr. Blair, you said yourself that we were all suspects. Don't you think I ought to keep what I found for the police? Sure, but uh, if it's about Sylvia's body... It's not about that. It just ain't no more brandy upstairs. There's plenty in the cellar. Yes, but it's dark down there. Take a candle. Take a candle? It's a good idea, I guess. Take a candle. Who that? Who goes there, friend or foe? What foe? Don't you cross my path, you old black cat. Have enough bad luck as it is. Come back here, kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. Is you me in the middle? Or somebody else in the door? I saw him before in my life. At least I don't think so. Good heavens, do you suppose he's a burglar? Wait a minute. That's the same man I saw early last evening, standing just outside the French doors. You mean the one everybody thought was me? Yes. Hold that on a moment. What are you looking for? Oh, papers, driver's license, any kind of identification. Well, there's nothing in there. His pockets are turned inside out. All the cleaning tags have been torn off. You mean somebody didn't want him identified? Turn that flashlight on his face again. I think I can identify him. That's Dr. Dexter. You mean the Dr. Dexter who stole the radium from Mercy Hospital? There have been two murders committed in this house. We've got to get the police somehow. It's almost morning, Mr. Blair. Daylight. Isn't that what you've been waiting for? How about it? Do you think you can get one of the cars running? Well, it might be quite a job, but I'll get right on it. Maybe I can help. Mr. Blair is a professional mechanic, Homer. That's right. If I can't fix my own car, I'll walk and deserve it. Maybe she's sleeping some moments, Scott. Cynthia, we brought you some lunch. Who is it? It's me, David. Let me alone. What do you want? Aren't you satisfied with one murder? Do you want to get me too? What's the matter? Is she ill again? She doesn't want her lunch. Oh, the poor child. She didn't have any breakfast either. She must eat something. Is David still there? He's only trying to help you, Cynthia. Help me? How can he help? Can he bring Sylvia back to life? Answer me. Can he? She's still taking it pretty hard. 
Why doesn't somebody answer me? Why do you let David bother me? Why haven't you gotten the police here? We've already sent for the police, Cynthia. Mr. Blair ought to be back with them any time now. You'd better go. Let Cousin Chatty and me handle it. I'll see you downstairs. He's gone now, Cynthia. David's gone. Of course he's gone. You told him the police were coming. You're fools! It's only Anne and Cousin Chatty now, Cynthia. Won't you please let us in, darling? Woodrow has a nice tray for you. Oh, let me alone. Please go away and let me alone. We're going now, Cynthia. But we're leaving a lunch tray just outside your door. Please try to eat something, dear. See anything of Mr. Blair out there? Blair? You don't expect him back there, do you? He has been a long time. Why doesn't Woodrow go up on the roof? There's a fine view of the causeway with a pair of field glasses. It'll take more than field glasses to locate Mr. Blair. I'm beginning to think you're right, Homer. Of course I'm right. He's not coming back. Who was he anyway? Just some stranger Josh picked up somewhere. Just where did you pick him up, Josh? Well, the causeway garage. Causeway garage? Yes, Mr. Blair's a mechanic there. Is he? Did Nielsen hire a mechanic? No, I, I don't think so. I stopped there just yesterday for gas. He didn't say anything about a mechanic. What are you getting at, Cousin Bo? Just this. We've been trading at the Causeway Garage ever since we've been down here. It's run by an old man named Nielsen alone. His business doesn't warrant hiring a mechanic. Oh, so now we find out Mr. Blair isn't a mechanic at all. Oh, he's a good enough mechanic, all right. Good enough to fix those three cars so we're stranded here. You ask me, we've been played for a bunch of fools, sitting on our hands while a killer makes a clean getaway. Well, we don't have to stay stranded here. I'll walk to town. No, I'm sorry, David, that won't do. I don't mean anything personal, of course. But the fact remains that one of us might be guilty, not Blair. The whole thing is simply this. We agreed to stay here until the police came. That's not possible now. But the theory's the same. We've all got to stay together. You mean we must all walk across the causeway? No, we may not have to walk. I've just been checking those cars against this instruction book. Blair, someone, pulled the distributor heads and removed the rotors. Uh, you mean we can make one of those rotors? Well, it's no cinch. But we might be able to fix up something to serve as a rotor. It'll take tools and a lot of time. How much time? Maybe hours before we get something to fit. All right, boys, better get started. Thank goodness you finally got it fixed. Well, it wasn't an easy job. Well, I found out what was wrong with the phone. It wasn't the storm. What do you mean? Someone cut the connection where it joins the house and stole 50 feet of wire. Well, our friend Blair seems to have done a pretty good job. Well, let's get to things and be on our way. And leave this car out here alone after all the work I did on that motor. And do you know how to operate one of these? Yes, it's like one Josh used to have. You thumb the safety catch here, the other safety is released when you squeeze. That's right. I'm going to leave you in charge. I think everyone here will agree you're a likely neutral. Not so sure about that. Ann and Blair seem to be hitting it off pretty well together. Look, one more crack Josh, out of each. We've had enough of that. Please go get my hat and coat. Okay, sis. Hold it right where you are. Hello, Miss Carroll. They say that a killer always returns to the scene of his crimes, don't they, Mr. Blair? Crimes? You don't mean that, do you? What else do you expect me to think? You tampered with three cars so that we'd be stranded on this island. You cut our phone wires so we couldn't even get a call out. You claim you work at the Causeway Garage. And we find out that you don't work at the Causeway Garage. You're certainly building up a case against me, Miss Carroll. Not to mention the fact that you supposedly left the island early this morning to get the police. Where are the police, Mr. Blair? They've been on the island since noon. Hiding from the murderer? And another thing. When Woodrow found that body down in the wine cellar, none of us knew who it was. But you did. 
You knew it was Dr. Dexter. Well, I ought to know. I've been trying to find him for nearly a week. To murder him and get the radium? Just to get the radium. That's what I'm using this for. What is that gadget? An electroscope. They use it in hospitals in case somebody accidentally misplaces a tube of radium. Locates radium no matter where it is. Then you admit that you're mixed up with Dexter's radium. $80,000 worth. That's what we insured it for. And no insurance company is going to pay a claim that big without an investigation. You're an insurance man? Chief claims investigator, Seaboard Company. When that light blinks on and off, there's radium around somewhere. I'm on the right track. How about giving me ten minutes to follow these lights? Not so fast, Mr. Blair. This happens to be a gun, and I happen to know how to use it. Do you? And I guess you know it won't work at all until you release that safety catch. Last night you came to the island trailing Dr. Dexter? And Sylvia Scott. Sylvia? You mean she helped steal the radium? Not exactly. Dexter had a crush on her and he thought if he had a lot of money he could make a hit with her. So he took her in on the deal. But if Sylvia's dead and Dr. Dexter's dead... That means there was somebody else in on it. A third person who killed them both. Hold that down there a second, will you? The radium must be buried right down here. Look at that. Steps. There's a tunnel down there. Maybe that's the secret tunnel Cousin Bo told us about last night. This thing says there's radium down there. How about it, Miss Carroll? Gonna give me those ten minutes? Go ahead. It's nine now. Here, take this flashlight and hold it on those steps. Tube, empty, cover missing. What does that mean? Somebody's got three parts of hospital radium and only two protective tubes for it. I wonder how far this tunnel goes. You've got eight minutes, Mr. Blair. Sylvia. Look at those shoes, Mr. Blair. Sylvia wasn't wearing those shoes when we went out for the ghost hunt. What do you mean? Last night, when Cousin Chatty and I took Cynthia up to her room, those blood-stained shoes were there in her closet. Later, I got to thinking, what are Sylvia's shoes doing in Cynthia's room? So I went back to check, and the shoes were gone. That's why I went outside last night. I wanted to see what shoes Sylvia was wearing. The body was gone. You can probably guess what my hunch is. That this isn't Sylvia. It's Cynthia. 
You mean the twins changed clothes for the ghost hunt? Why didn't they switch shoes, too? Because the twins didn't wear the same size. It was the only difference between them. But why did they change clothes? Because when Sylvia went down to the cellar last night, it wasn't a cellar rat that scared her. Whoever killed Dexter tried to kill her, too. Of course, uh, she didn't tell Cynthia that when they changed clothes. Do you think Sylvia would do a thing like that? Well, you told me yourself she had no use for her twin sister. The change of clothes stunt worked. Then somebody killed Cynthia thinking it was Sylvia. That's why she keeps herself locked in that room upstairs. Because she can't take a chance on the killer learning the truth. Then Sylvia can tell us who the killer is. That is, if we can get her to talk. Look out! <laughs> Upstairs. And probably getting off the island right now. Bo, you never should have left Anne out here alone. I left her my gun. She knows how to use it. Who's that? That you, Homer? David! Any sign of Anne? I couldn't find her. Same goes for me. Are you sure she isn't in the house somewhere? We've looked everywhere for her, Homer. Josh is upstairs looking now. If anything happens to that girl, I'll never forgive myself. She's not in her room. Mr. Rich, look, cellar door. It's Anne. Blair, too. Where have you been, sis? Oh, you had us so worried. And you, Blair, where have you been? And where are the police? All over the island. They'll be here the minute we need them, which I think is just about now. Mr. Blair wants us all in the living room. Including Cynthia. I'll ask her, Mr. Blair. But there's not much use. She didn't even answer the last time I knocked, and the door is locked. I'll get her down if I have to use my pass key. It's Cousin Bo, Cynthia. I'm coming in. I'm sorry, Cynthia. Mr. Blair! David, all of you, come up right away! They killed Cynthia. That's right. Somebody did kill Cynthia. Last night, outside of your ghost hunt. This is Sylvia. Look, the door to Sylvia's room is open. The killer came through that door the same way Mr. Richmond came through the hall door with a pass key. And went out through that window so he wouldn't be seen out in the hall. Mr. Blair. Something you just said. I don't understand. This is Sylvia? The twins changed clothes last night. It was Sylvia's idea. She knew her life was in danger, and she was ruthless enough to use her own sister as a decoy. I'm an insurance detective cooperating with the police. We've kept you all isolated on the island while we uh, search for the radium that Dexter stole from Mercy Hospital. Sylvia got herself involved with Dexter and the radium, but they weren't alone in it. They took a third person to act as sort of a broker to unload the stuff. That third person decided to unload his two partners. He discovered a secret tunnel in the old lighthouse, and it gave him a chance to kill both Sylvia and Dexter without risk. He could never be convicted of murder, even if he were suspected. Uh, what do you mean, even if he were suspected? Well, the legal term is corpus delecti. You can't convict a man of murder if you can't find the bodies. And the radium was worth a lot of money to him, enough to warrant two murders. Three murders, Mr. Blair. Well, the murder of Cynthia last night was a mistake. The killer didn't find out about it until he was down in the tunnel with us just a little while ago that he killed the wrong sister. Oh, wait a minute. If you knew that, you could have prevented the third killing. I didn't know it. He found out the same time I did and acted first. But it's his uh, last killing. Uh, do you know who he is? The killer's right here in this room with us. 
And the radium, even though it's still missing, is going to help tag him. The radium Dexter stole was in three lead safety tubes. This is one of them. The cover came off while the killer was down in the tunnel. That means he's still got three parts of radium and only two protective tubes for it. The reaction of unprotected radium on the human body is... Well, you've all heard that radium can cure cancer. It can also cause cancer. The burns you get from exposure to radium may not show up right away, but it's in your system. And there's no sure way of knowing just how you may react to it. Why do they keep it in lead tubes? Why do they handle large amounts of it with a 10-foot fishpole? Because it can be fatal. Radium can kill. Miss Carroll, will you uh, turn on the radio, please? There's another strange fact about a person who's been exposed to radium. Every time they move past the radio, the radium contained in their body will cause static. You uh, don't hear any static now, so Miss Carroll is clear. Now, I'm going to ask the rest of you, one by one, to uh, move past that radio. All right, Woodrow, you first. Me first? I sure hope I don't turn out to be the last. All right, Woodrow, you're free. Thank you, sir. The next, please. This is ridiculous. I never heard of a test like this, and I've read a lot of science. You're not afraid to make the test, are you? Are you satisfied, Mr. Carroll? Uh, next, please. Uh, cousin Chatty? Oh, these things make me terribly nervous. I'm sorry. I feel a little faint. Oh, well, can I get her a glass of water? I'll get it. It's right here. While the rest of them stall as long as they can, I might as well get my case dismissed. I haven't much faith in your little test, Mr. Blair. But if it'll make you happy, here goes. How about it, Homer? Wait. Grab him, boys. All right. All right, I did it. I killed all three of them. Get me a doctor. You don't need a doctor, Homer. You heard what happened when I passed the radio? A little homemade static. I did it with a loose ground wire. This afternoon, I had my office check all Dexter's phone calls. He called your number three times the day before he disappeared from Mercy Hospital with a radium. Take him away, boys. Cousin Chatty tells me you're staying over with him. In the presidential suite. May I make up your bed, Mr. President? Delighted. Did your car break down again, Mr. Blair? Well, this time I'm hanging around till the office sends me a new electroscope. That and uh, other reasons. This time I'm sure you can count on a good night's sleep. Well, I don't know. I've got a lot on my mind. I mean, like, uh, finding the radium and all. Good night, Mr. Blair. Good night, Miss Carroll. Oh, Miss Carroll, one more thing. You mean in case you should need anything further? Just ring the bell, Mr. Blair. And uh, who will answer, Miss Carroll? Woodrow? Why not try ringing the bell, Mr. Blair? Me, sir? No. Oh, yeah, Woodrow, you could give me some brandy. Yes. Brandy, did you say? Well, uh, anything you've got upstairs. The bourbon will do. Oh, yes. 